with this setup, especially in, in architecture and in, uh, in, in computing, where uh, the situation is that uh, not a lot of people doing research in these fields, very few in comparison to other fields, for example, as we've seen gaming, but it's just 500, 1000 times more. And I think the global situation in research at universities with computing and architecture is that I think if you go to Autodesk or they just have more developers in computing and architecture than all universities together combined. So therefore it's a strange setup. And the situation is that most of these researchers are uh, quite isolated at their, so there's a kind of individual uh, uh, interest in this field. They're isolated, it's very small groups. They do their stuff, they're talented, they're doing it with an engagement. And then it goes for three, five years, and then they're gone. And then the other generation comes. There's very few continuity in these things, quite different from other fields, which are much more solid in, in, in research, I think. I'm not sure, getting older and seeing more, <laughs> but I think it's, it's different. So I'm facing this situation, the setup with, with our group was that we uh, understood ourselves as uh, scouts of, so I always thought, yeah, this mainstream of technical development and AI and the internet then in, in, in games uh, or whatever. So it's like uh, like a highway, a German highway, not this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a car that I really like to drive more than uh, 200, 200, the limit is always 250 kilometers. Yeah, I like to have this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but now people got they got afraid of this so only 20 percent of the autobahns are allowing you to and most there's too much traffic but i really like to drive fast so and <laughs> so like these motorways i think that the principal development of of, uh, of of computing is and if you're an architect we have to be clear if we go with cat systems in architecture uh, it's clear like we are, we are on the tractor on the field, <laughs> seating gone or whatever. <laughs> so this is our situation. So I'm pretty sure like it's, it's like this. So, uh, and it's just not because it's not smart and that's all, it's just because we are so few and we are so uh, isolated in groups and in our research. So therefore, our vector was just to understand what's going on with the highways where we're heading to <laughs> and getting ideas how to translate it to architectural applications. So we never had uh, the intention to develop things by ourselves or to understand the things that uh, we can uh, push these technologies by itself and, and compete with uh, computer graphic people or with, with gaming people and so on. It's just not our game. So therefore we have been scouts. <clears throat> and to be competitive or to get a, a, a feedback that you know work is good or whether it's working what you're doing or not, uh, in our community, it was we easily outperformed our colleagues, yeah? and uh, therefore we just found companies. If it worked in market, <laughs> things had been good. So I founded five companies, which is quite a lot in Europe. It's not. I think it's here's a completely different game. <laughs> Currently, there are two hundred fifty people employed there in these different companies. So it's not super. Right? It's as old as Google. So it's not very good, so, but good. <laughs> 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 and the interesting thing is, all these ideas of Google and so on. Of course, we had it. So and then we, we just hadn't been able to do it and to manage it and to establish it, which I think it's. So for example, we, we, I had a very uh, uh, intense uh, company and this, uh, there was an investment of 120 million. <clears throat> so it was, was in smart buildings. And this is simply not working in Europe. This, uh, these things have to be done. I don't know here in California, I think. 
these stories and the, the attitude towards these things uh, is, is different. And uh, Europe, they just always start to mimic then conventional electric electricians want to talk with them to to uh, to enable them to do it then electronically just instead of going uh, in a disruptive way with power into a market no way to do that we argued very very hard but it was not not possible to do this so that's interesting to see so <clears throat> with this first phase this was until 2008 there was one a um, major <clears throat> uh, thing we ex uh, yeah, uh, uh, thing what happened is in 2008 we managed with our AI to win a comp architectural competition with a design which was fully automatic by AI, and we didn't say that, and we won a prize. So this was we have been proud. Well, it's 2008, huh? so it's aeons ago. <laughs> so, and uh, the, the, the fascinating story, or the word, what is frustrating or fascinating, so it was that nobody liked it. Of course, not the colleagues, I can understand. <laughs> but the real estate developers didn't like it. So we had not been able to, I was good in selling things, but I was not able to sell this. Not to the banks, not to the uh, developers, not to the construction companies, uh, of course, not to the architects. Uh, so I can understand. I was able to sell it. And even not the students like that. There's no way that time. This might be a different game, but now it's uh, out. I'm out of this age to make a new company. But uh, that was the situation. So and then we uh, said, OK, if it is like that, that computers can do what we think architecture is. The question then was, what is architecture then? So, so there had been a turning point at, at two, around 2008 where we said, either we go underground with our machines <laughs> and make 100 competitions a year or something with three persons, or we make a step back and think what is the hell is going on here on so so at the university we just made this step back from then on we didn't found companies anymore we bought books as you can find them on the internet easily so we had <coughs> we, we learned how to talk and how to think about uh, uh, architecture the, the the theory of architecture we linked that to computer science, the principal computer science, and understood that, especially AI, what this is about. We linked that uh, to philosophy, the principle of mathematics, and so on and so on. So for some three, four years now, this found an interesting uh, situation. So I think now I'm able to describe that in complex, complex things in simple words. <laughs> so, and these things fall into place very easily, with, but in an in a unusual way. So people are not used to it, to think like that. It fits to what uh, we have in mathematics. The principle changes around 1900, what we have with quantum physics, and uh, it fits very well to, to the philosophical parts and, and so on. All this fits uh, very well with our thinking, but it's challenging. People, again, don't really like to hear that. So, but that's actual status. So therefore, now three, four years, our research goes at, uh, at, at ETH goes how to, if you understand how these things work, how to do the architecture, how to do architectural, actual architectural design, which is not driven by uh, computers. So how, how, to, how to talk with an environment which is smart as architects. 
So to give you an idea how um, our thinking is, so the first is, I think with AI, because uh, these are general problem solvers. So they just solve any problem. So if you, if you are connected, there is no problem. So it's complicated to understand. So therefore you have, as an architect, you have to understand <laughs> to forget about problems. Complicated. <laughs> you don't have to look for solutions. Forget about solutions because this is the machines. So if you have that, it's very interesting that you think about uh, history, about cultural context and so on. In, uh, you have to think about it in circles, not in a, a line of historicity as we are used in school. So it's like a Copernican turn where everything is turning. And then you think not in, in, in lines of logic, when you're thinking in constellations. And these constellations repeat over our history. And the assumption is it will be in other cultural contexts, it's, it's, it's similar uh, uh, things. So, and what we, I'm pretty sure that what we have today is a renaissance. It's in constellation of the Renaissance in 15th century. And it's in constellation about the, the, the turn from uh, the Greek to the Roman uh, uh, setup in antiquity around uh, 300 BC. So it's uh, this constellation we can learn from to get stability in a world where everything is like, like we experience the internet. Everything is connected and you can do anything. Everything got fake and you, you don't know what to do. If you have these constellations, just to give you an example, then AI is just as, is, is just like Descartes differential. It's just the differential on a new scale. So Descartes, for example, had uh, there was with the with the Medici's and so on, <laughs> there had these these tool books. Well, like we are using computers now, always with tools, what, what uh, Nicola is, is talking about. So we have these, these books, and there was, I, I, I forgot the name, you might know, so uh, 1,000 pages, 1,200 pages, all the tricks in mathematics to, to, to cover the world uh, with, yeah, in, in, the, in the knowledge of the time. So all the tricks. Then then Descartes came and said, I don't know why nobody realized that this is all the same. <laughs> and then he took these numbers <laughs> and put a dot on it and said, I think about these numbers not as a number of as like a thing, but as a differential of numbers. So it's a difference of things. And I don't touch the number. It's just a differential. And by that, he, these things collapse to 60 pages, all the tricks in one. And uh, I'm pretty sure what with AI, it's just like this. So we have all the tricks of the tools, <laughs> all the different programs, all the engineering for everything, all the problems we solve in different ways. We have all the toolboxes and libraries and all the do these things with AI, just the same. And this is the reason why with, with, with uh, Google, for example, they can do translations, they can go with traffic, they can, uh, uh, whatever, they go to healthcare, they go to any field to play chess, they play go, they drive cars, whatever, these thousands of applications, they're all the same. And this code is, and we, yeah, it, it took us years, huh, to, uh, three, four years <laughs> to understand how this works. It's like this, it's a poem like this. And what we see and experience in, in literature that we have these, these different uh, of, uh, fields and specifications. This is much more on, on engineering. It's just more like having a red or a blue car or one with, with uh, 200 horsepower or one with 168 horsepower, so these kind of things. It's, doesn't, it's just a car. And the car is a car. And AI is an AI. So it, it's, and it's, in principle, it's this poem. One can be, for, for certain things, it can be a little faster and better and more adaptive than, than others, but in principle, it's this dot on a number. So I'm pretty sure it's like this. With all these complicated stuff and all these complications we have will collapse like 
things, all the mathematical tricks collapsed in uh, differential equations. So, <clears throat> having this, <laughs> now understanding these things and then learning from uh, the, uh, the older times in same constellation, or what is interesting if you go in counter constellations, you go with inversion and can learn for example, of the classicist time in this 18th, 19th century, what they are talking, you can learn from that in inversion. So everything works pretty fine. So another story I want to say, because this is with the models and the maps, and this is with AI and architecture. I'm pretty sure it's like this. So the first, so what we have, we are obsessed with images. So, and the images are massive. That is what you touch. So in, in physics, these things is of time. What you see as an image is always frequencies of, uh, of, of, of energy and they are, they are, uh, they are in time. Uh, so uh, red is, uh, is low frequency, blue is high frequency. And this is what you see. So images is of time. And images are massive, but it's things you can touch or which are sensible. You have, you have the senses to do that. This is about the images. So and these things here, this is what we, what we look and we have Lacan and whatever, so these, these kind of philosophy. These are, they have history in time. So this thing is done in, 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 a, in a factory, then you've grown in a wood and, blah, 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 and all these things. And it has this history and it's here. And now it's staying here for, for, for two years or three years. There are the scratches and everything. So these things is a memory of time. If you're sitting there in, a, in, a, in the forest and so on, then you have the river, the stones, and you have the rhythms of the, of the, of the seasons and so on. They are all memories of times in, in different scales. And they all go back to the Big Bang and spreading the world in different frequencies. This is what we have and what we have to touch. This is massive. <coughs> Physics calls it uh, material, and it's mass or of gravity. So with us, it's the worlds. <laughs> they are massive. So I, if I run, I always think if I don't, if, if I can't forget about that, this wall is massive, I will not hurt uh, going through. I always think it. my key problem is that I can't forget that this is massive. Yeah? If I really forget that, I would not hurt myself. <laughs> because I don't know, these, are, these atoms are here and the next is in Miami, yeah, also of this size. and. The matter is like this, so it's, it's, it's nothing in between. So in principle, I should be able to go through without any collision, but it's not like that <laughs> because I don't believe it. So therefore, <clears throat> these are the uh, massive things. And in architecture, this is the walls <clears throat> in Western. So, we always collide in the horizon. And with our eyes, with the pictures, we cut it through the window. So we cut the chronologic, the time with our eyes, and we're looking at massive things. Interesting uh, subnote in China, I'm pretty sure the ceiling is, the sky is massive. I can't imagine, and the horizon is always. Uh, uh, open. With us, the sky is open and the, uh, the, the walls, the horizon is always blocked with massive things. So, and by the way, the cultural implications of these things I'm telling you are always uh, uh, different. In, in a, but these mathematical uh, stuff, so the massive, for example, is directly in mathematics directly with the numbers. The sensible, what we call this, what we have with um, fine arts, what we have with science, what we have with beauty, <clears throat> what we have with engineering, all those with numbers. 
the primacy of, uh, of thinking in these constellations of the 18th, 19th century is about numbers. It's about the massive, the primarity of the massive of the images, therefore enlightenment. So we think this is, and this is, by the way, called reality. Reality is massive. <laughs> so, quantum physics is not massive. So there, there are the particles, these are massive. And then there are, there are the, the photons. And the photon is of, an, uh, of another quality. And you always have these two. So the photons <coughs> are an interesting species, <laughs> interesting, and they are of space. So if the massive things is traces in time from the Big Bang to, to the presence and spreading and getting diverse all the time, in sec as every second getting in towards diversity and spreading from the Big Bang, <coughs> that's time, that's gravity, then uh, photon is something else. And that's space. And a photon is <laughs> light speed. It's transparent and not massive, but no mass. And because of light speed, it's omnipresent. So which means, <laughs> it's fantastic, <laughs> that here, there's everything of this planet in here, but it's not there, and it's not real. So that this is what we look at, what we think of as light. These are photons. Light is omnipresent and uh, transparent and omnipresent, and is not colliding. So this is the, the characteristic of space. So this is what we in, in, in Western cultures think of as space. So, and the space is full of everything. So it's so complicated to understand. So therefore, for example, very, very interesting. And uh, here I'm, I'm talking in a massive way to my mobile phone. So this is massive. If I'm talking, there's a the membrane and so on and so on. This thing here is converting it from time, the massive time, to space, the electromagnetic waves, and fills the space up to China, <laughs> Africa, whatever, fills it with my talk in light speed. So there are some technical tricks, but this is how it works. <coughs> so in China, <laughs> I take the same thing, taking my talk because of the, the number, decoding it and making it real again so I can hear. So the capacity that we are able to do that, that's space. Or in antiquity, it just was light. So, and I'm very puzzled. So, it's, so this is quantum physics. Huh? It's not my invention. It's just quantum physics. And this is therefore a technique, a trick, how to deal with quantum, on, on quantum physical level, on scale of quantum physics. We hadn't been able to do that in, in, uh, in Renaissance. We hadn't been able to do it in, in, in antiquity. This is what we can do for the mathematics, the physics for that is 100, 120 years old. So we're able to do that. And now we implement it and cover our planet with it on this scale. This is fascinating, you simply say, but, but with these constellations, it's not new. Because this notion of space, I told you, is constituent for all our culture all the time. The reason about space in this way, I'm, I'm talking, explaining it to you in quantum physics to tell, the reason about the, uh, the space with the axions, with the atoms, and you can go with all the written documents we know, in the same way I'm talking to you. There's nothing new 
in the intellectual thing. But what is new is the scale, the technological scale. And by that, it's getting more powerful. So this scale says that if this is light, space is of light, of photons. Today we say photons. This is what describes space in the dichotomy to, the, to time, which is a massive thing, which is what we can see. So space can't be seen. Uh, time is, can be seen. So we have this dichotomy. In antiquity, <coughs> we had the scale of space and the physics of space and of light is always optics. That's optics. We have uh, light and we understand light as white lines. So in antiquity, with, with, with Greek uh, philosophy, with Greek uh, 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 mathematicians, lines are decoupled from things. And these lines have been straight and they have been white. So that's what the thinking. And then you see what Euclidean geometry is, how to decouple white lines of light from things to get stability, constructing triangles and circles and whatever. So what we see in Renaissance is another scale. There we have for me not decouple the lines, it's themselves start to rotate. So now the things rotate to get the lines, now the lines rotate. And then we are not talking about uh, things in lines, we are talking about properties of lines. So, and circulated lines of certain frequencies are colors. So the Renaissance established the optics of colors. We had the prisms and then we, and we curved the lines with telescope, microscopes, and so on. And then we can fake things getting nearer, bigger, getting more very small, and, and so on, just by faking, by getting curvature of space. Because we are able to think of space, not in straight lines only, but in curved lines, and on curved lines of frequencies. So that's another scale, which means we can do more things, we are more powerful. Another way, another way of, of, of doing maps and so on. And the perspective drawing is nothing, it's, it's, it's just one implementation of it. So we have the lines, we have a set of lines, we start to rotate them. <laughs> That's perspective drawing. Or directly with crypto, uh, cryptography, so with, with Alberti, uh, the Caesar code is very, very straight. It's on straight lines on, on, on just shifting uh, the, the alphabets. Make it, and there was no way to decrypt it. And then if you do it in curves and circles, then you have this uh, cipher mechanism of Alberti, you know this disk, and you just put it in circles and, and, and run. So it's always the same figure. And then you not only have been able to decipher the old uh, uh, encryption, but you establish a new one, which is uh, circulating the old one. It's always this movement. So in this line today, now the colors are circulated again. I would say we now have space of imagination. It's of images. The space is full of images of changing colors. You know, when I saw these colors are stable, you trust it in the colors. Now we trust in the change of colors. So we trust in pixels. So the space is full of images of imagination. So then you can, for example, do this is our scale today in every aspect. So now you can, for example, go with the antiquity, with this, uh, with the space of white lines. This is what we call ratio. 
if you go in, uh, in, in Renaissance, the scale is of the color of the space full of colors is uh, free will. But you can name it like this. And the space of the day, the quantum space of the day with of full of changing colors of images is uh, imagination. That's a driving. So the space is full of imagination. In simple terms. <laughs> so, good. And then, for example, and then we, I can go here with a text I'm, I, I, I'd written uh, to show what artificial intelligence, what our cogito, and what architectonics, and the role about this as of architects. I will read that as a summary. If the space is full of imagination, then artificial intelligence is not a technical thing. If space is full of it, if the space is full of it, then everything is smart. Our planet is smart. This is what we call environment, this is what we call climate change. We're a little afraid that this climate is smart. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so then what we have is all these ecology things. So then we, we try to like and to love and get in a love affair with trees, with flowers, and so everything. So everything gets smart. And we and we with, with animals. These things are part of that space is full of imagination. And we have to think there's no principal distinction between yeah, a technical system playing smart or an artifact made smart or a natural, natural subject doing smart, obviously. It's just a different mindset that we face space of imagination. So in this AI, we just enter this, we get kind of eyes for this space of imagination. Good. <laughs> so to make this content, I will go there in, in, in a precise way and make a construction there. If the massivity of things I can collide with, or the massivity of time, is with numbers. The mathematics of numbers is uh, arithmetics. <clears throat> so then the mathematics of space is geometry. And geometry is not visual. It's not with objects. It's with characters. So in mathematics, we have characters for that. We symbolize things. So if you go with uh, Euclid, or Euclid, the, the, the first books, uh, the, the books of Euclid about geometry, it's no drawing, it's no objects. It's just talking about in space, in reasonable ways, to get stability and the things rotating. And every, if, when everything is transparent and omnipresent, how to get stability, that's geometry. And this is characters. So therefore, I think uh, with uh, with time and with history and with a massive, this is what we what we in Western do with our eyes. We cut space in time. So we can't see space. We need the differential of space. To make an, 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 an to get an idea of space by intellect, what we see is time. So the tricky thing with our technical images is <laughs> that they put it and then we get a kind of derivation of this. So we cut it by with, with the camera, and then we can put it here, and then we we, we cut it again. So we, we we play around with this on a, in, in technical terms, but it doesn't 
change the principal setup that we can't see space. We cut uh, space with our time, uh, with our eyes in time. Whereas if we go with the correct characters, with our voice, so in Western culture, it's our voice talking. This covers space. So this is transparent and it's in principle, it's omnitrack. So we can talk all by ourselves and it's in all directions. We don't cut it, we, we claim space. We scan the whole space and it's, it's, it's everywhere. And we can do it simultaneously and it's transparent. So therefore what we have is in Western, we talk space and we see time. And of course, one is not working without the other. It's a question what is primary and so on. The notion of how to cultivate that, this is different by culture. So Muslims do different than Chinese and Western and so on. And they even can go Anglo American, different than continental. <laughs> can we get these, these different? Jewish people do it different and so on. That's very interesting how these constellations then between different cultures are. But that we have just space and time as an objectivity where we can work with, and there's nothing else but characters and numbers. Again, implementing a different way, especially than in, in Asia, with these. Uh, so you see, they are not writing in time. You are writing in time, so it's it's a line, but, and they are writing in space. Very interesting. So they are reading in images. Good. That's that, so the mathematics in of, of with characters is with algebra, and then with uh, <coughs> for for example with AI what we experience. <laughs> The, the interest it's algebra. So you say A and the, the, the same with a differential equation. So with this, this Descartes. So Descartes says in these methods, yeah, everything is fake. But the difference of two fakes I think about is not fake, it's me. And this is what he says uh, I'm thinking, therefore I am because everything is fake, <laughs> but the difference of fakes, it's me. That's the, ratio. That's the free will or the, the ratio, uh, what we have, and that's me. I'm thinking, therefore I am. And with AI, it's a simple, and that's algebra. With AI, it's the same. So you take whatever you take as, as, as certain data, this is what we have with big data, all these things connected, you take something else, for example, with self-driving cars, you take all the pictures of the cameras, and then you say, you take all the actuators of good driving, of, of car driving, steering wheel, gas, and uh, blinking lights, and so on, so these actuators, and you simply say, these things should be the same. So it's A, and it's B, you can take whatever A, whatever B, and you say, this should be the same. That's imagination. It had been free will and renaissance. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is our imagination. This should be the same. And uh, then AI is able to morph these things as one. And the interesting is, if it is the same, you can say, like you know it in algebra, you can cross out all context. The reality, you cross out reality. Forget about reality. Because it's on both sides of the equation is reality. You take them off, <laughs> takes the data as they are, forget reality and say it's April, and it's just working. Put them in another reality, it's just working. That's algebra and that's geometry. This is how you deal with Bonds with space. And we did it all our cultures, in all times, in all our cultures, like this. We name it out differently, we cultivate it in different ways, we have different uh, levels of, 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 uh, of uh, 
of, of, of scales and power, technical power there, but it's always like this in the constellation, which we call Renaissance today. And there's always only a Renaissance Baroque and Enlightenment Classicism. Nothing else. Again, numbers and characters, massive and photons, light, gravity and light. There's nothing else. And that's the objectivity of all cultures of all times. Good. Having that, now I want to <laughs> talk about, and this is a reading. What is the role of architecture then? How to talk about our planet and what is architecture then? So, this is called artificial intelligence, cogito, and architectonics. I cannot say that I like computers. I like the intellect. And computers are out there, crystalline and most powerful. It is beautiful how they operate. And it's frightening to see or no words dissolving and witness the stoic or artistic reactions of our societies. Computers are the challenge and our societies are reacting in inadequate ways, risking and even celebrating the idea of a clash. Computers show their power in the form of global urbanization. The global dystropic rhetoric says that we cannot afford this, which obviously doesn't matter and opens the door to an overwhelming production of artifacts, swallowing up all cultures in the generic. It is time for architecture to understand the mechanics, to affirm power and to give this power a face. It is time to give the forms of power a forum. It is time to rethink the city and to start navigating our planet with consciousness. So I'm very angry and afraid of our current discussions about uh, climate change and so on, <laughs> that these people staring at the first pictures of, 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 a of a planet moving, so getting smart. So because the images, so the image of our planet, so, for me, it's, it's, I have been there now at NASA with Apollo and <laughs> in your park. So I, I was a young boy when Apollo was on 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 uh, on the moon, and I was like this. And this was a, the time when when my family we, we never had a, 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 a TV set. We bought a TV set to to see the man on the moon. So I was a bit <laughs> so and. Uh, <clears throat> This was the first picture of our planet in total. So now with all these satellites with, from, from the outside and with all these uh, sensors and with the internet from the inside, we get the picture of our body, so the planetary body. So the interesting thing is just that this body is moving. Yeah. <laughs> so the picture, it, it's because pictures are of time and this is not stable, of course not. And we got afraid. To say, <laughs> so that's okay. It's like a kid learning to to touch, to see in colors and so on. So yeah, of course, we learn uh, uh, to, to see our planet with imagination. Very, very clear. So we got afraid. So I'm not saying that this is not dangerous what we are doing. <laughs> of course it's dangerous. I'm just saying, but this, on the first hand, it's very fantastic that we get an um, imagination of our planet and that this is changing, of changing light. I think it's absolutely inadequate to treat that with a single pixel, which uh, just shows CO2. And simply say, if this is getting red, it's bad. If it's getting blue, it's good for our planet. It is like if you go with a one-dimensional joystick to navigate Starship Earth. It's nonsense. And it's, I'm afraid of that. I'm very afraid of that. It's simply not adequate to do things like that. So this is what I'm... Architecture can help. So it's very important. <laughs> <laughs> and we need cities for that in strong contrast to, to urbanism. So artificial intelligence, how to think about AI. Forget about AI as a technical development of the last 20 years. 
It is a mindset which comes into being uh, came into being around 1900 and which becomes evident today because it had found its adequate technical implementation around 2000. Therefore, we have, a re have to read the whole 20th century as AI. Everything else would be inadequate. So all modernist style, all the buildings here are AI, Art of, are the articulations of AI. Articulations of more or less conscious understanding of quantum physics. So it's nothing new. I think it's very important. The international style, Bauhaus and architecture, all this is AI. If you read uh, uh, Le Corbusier, AI. If you read this as a poem of the right angle in from uh, this is very, very important uh, writing of him. It's exactly the story I told you. Look for it. <laughs> <laughs> We experience a digital Copernican turn. All problems are solved by machines on flat land. We have taken off and navigated a starship. We do not need a solution. All solutions are on board. We need a direction. Listening to the talk about a, challenging, a changing weather, which is something we cannot measure, and the climate, which we can estimate and calculate, reading it as an indicator of our awakening awareness of our planetary body and the demand for a navigation of spaceship Earth. Of course, it is frightening to see colors for the first time, but it's definitely not a problem. It is a situation which requires that the next step to the yet unknown uh, be made. What did we take with us on our spaceship? Yes, we have to be careful, operate in cycles, do recycling to the survive. But what is out there? It is anything, and it is a big plenty that we are threatened by. The question of energy, for example. Take energy, for example. Energy is not a resource. Energy is just there. In principle, abundance. The world current, uh, currently consumes uh, around 600 exajoules of primary energy per year. The efficiency of our engines is 30 to 50 percent, which makes about 220 exajoules that we are using to feed 8 billion people. And you're right, nature's photosynthesis produces only 400 exajoules of resources, which is neither enough, sustainable, nor good if we consume it. But look out of the window of our starship, and you see that the solar radiation impact to our planet is 4 million exajoules. Energy is not about resources, nature, and scarcity. It is about intellect, our planet, and the plenty. This is what 10,000 is uh, illustrated. So this is what we need, and this is what the sun solar impact to our planet is. <laughs> so, I mean, would we not, uh, uh, would not be uh, an ugly PDF? It's then very nice. Like, not so nice like your rent. <laughs> oh, <I'm very> nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's a there's a red dot here. <laughs> yeah. And if it would be mathematica, then I could rotate this uh, sphere. This is what we need. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not turning? Because I've made the decision. What what um, Okay. There's a delay. So, so the red dot on the sphere is what we need. Ah, it's a <laughs> <laughs> Extra. <laughs> you, can, you can take two and get four or something <laughs> for free. That's one to 10,000, yes. So just switch your mindset from burning the 400 exajoule of available resources in here on this starship to accessing the 4 million exajoules of solar radi radiation out of there. Just switch from consumption of what nature is producing to artificial photosynthesis powering artificial intelligence and the coexistence with nature. Done. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Some obvious numbers. And obviously, this switch is on its way. 
If we look at the factuality of numbers, things are growing beyond natural proportions. In the last 50 years, global wealth had increased by the factor of 60. In the last 50 years, life expectancy has grown by 20 years. In the last 50 years, an extra 6 billion people became literate. In the last 200 years, the rate of homicide went down by 90%. Despite all wars of the 20th century, our ancestors had been very, very brutal beyond imagination of today. <laughs> it was normal in, antique, in, in antiquity that with all these cities, they just went to the other city, killed all men, and they, it was a sign of mercy of not killing the women and the kids. This was normal practice. And there was <laughs> the, the, the one out of two people died with homicide in their times. So it was very normal that you get killed, slaughtered or whatever. So this was daily practice. So we forget that. <laughs> so it's, it's a huge improvement. It's, it's not good. We don't think this is paradise today. Of course not. <laughs> but it's very, it's, a, it's a much an improvement. Yeah? This is AI. AI is driven by a new mindset. AI accesses the energy of the solar stream. AI solves old, old problems. AI is a new ground. AI is nutritious. Things prosper in all aspects. And it's frightening, of course. And no culture has experience of this challenge. No culture, not ours. So the Western culture doesn't know as well. No culture likes it. All cultures are blind and yet exploited to it, Explo exposed to it. And because there is no problem, you cannot find an existing solution. We are alone in outer space. Why does AI work? Let us have a closer look at the nature of this success of AI. It turns out that the principal interests of people on this planet are not so diverse as you might expect. Everybody likes good food, everybody takes care of their kids, everybody goes for good medicine, good education, good housing, mobile phones, being mobile, safe places, decent work, hanging out. We do it in different ways, but we all like more or less the same things. The smartness of AI is that it delivers all its services with almost no direct implications in form or structure. You can play any culture on penicillin, you can run any machine with electricity, you can talk any language with our mobile, and you can play cultures on any culture on the internet. It's so easy. If there's a problem, then it is that everything becomes so easy. All structures and all forms of our cultures is dissolving in the new stream of AI. We need to be patient. AI is challenging to all, is a challenge to all cultures. Wealth always and only comes with education. Education takes time, people will emancipate and the societies will flourish with these artifacts of AI. Landscapes evolves on this new planet, and it's what we call urbanization today. The prosperous industrialized farmland of today, feeding eight, people, eight billion people with ease. No cultural setup before has been able to do so. Of course, there are unbearable problems that have not yet been solved, but addressing them, or at least pretending to take care of them, is part of the solution that AI provides. How did AI evolve? It's night. You are at home. It's cold outside. You organize your comfy and warm place around the fire. You maintain your life with care. Your life runs in cycles. Time is passing by. In this concentration, you develop engines and technical structures. Your life is centered on reflection, on education, on control and analysis of everything, including yourself and your psyche, of course, because you have time. 
the calculus, the engine, legalité, the prophet, the texas, the beauty and the beast, the logic of thought, studies and hysteria. An entity, but only hours later, the sunrise, strong and warm. There's a whole world that shows up outside in the bright sunlight, quite different from your home that you got so comfortable with. Everything is strange in different colors. Everyone is telling stories about their dreams of the night. There's a plenty of everything. It is rich, powerful, and all shades of strange forms fascinating. You get outside, you are confused because these things are not part of your orchestrated home. You join all these aliens as a migrant and you start to learn to talk, to make your way out of the cozy circles at home. These are the friends you meet, the TV, the automobile, the nuclear energy, the airplanes, the bubble gums, the antibiotics, the synthetic fertilizer, the laser light, the bikini, the photovoltaic, the electronic computers, the service window, the mobile phone. Things are growing like crazy on this new industrialized farmland, which just needs the sun to grow. 100 times more of everything compared just 100 years ago. Not only this, it is most irritating that things of value becoming <clears throat> inflationary, inflationary by these numbers. And not only things, but your social status too. You worry about it, and it's difficult to keep your stance in style. The question so far. Why are we not aware of these numbers and talk about saving our planet, claiming we are poor? Answer so far. First, if organization in its industrialized farmland and it's going, it's going like crazy, then people in charge, whoever they are, are the landlords. And the others who don't know these numbers are farmers. And the farmers, they are right to act, sustain, act sustainable and it is right to believe that it is good to save the planet. The next question is, what is the source of power and who is in charge? Cogito. We now proceed with mathematics, the royal part to knowledge because it's uncorrupted by any pragmatics, space and time. Should I, uh, it's, it's another 20 minutes. Should I do that or should we? It's just continuing like this. <laughs> I think we should uh, start to discuss these things. Huh? I think it's enough. Okay. Get an idea. So these books are where uh, they, they are printed or will be printed. I'm um, I'm starting to. Uh, I'm writing 10 books about digital architecture in the tradition of the truth and Alberti, <laughs> the same style and, 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 and uh, to, to make these things uh, in, in these schemes as a servant of the intellect of our, of our culture. So not as an author of it. So this, this is, uh, we had it already with authorship. So you have to be, make a step back as a person to, uh, to be able to talk and embrace the planet. So it's uh, it's not about authorship. I'm not a fighter for this thing. So in that sense, I, I dare to write 10 books about digital architecture and try it to compete with my... <laughs> no, this will come, I can give it to you. This will come, it's, it's about to get published. It's a small book. I don't have a, a question, but I mean, I have like so many thoughts after the presentation. Uh, maybe actually wanted to ask you about um, the, you know, there are writers out, out there thinking about like coevolution and, and like organic life evolving with AI and kind of becoming intermingled, right? Is that part of your thinking as well? Or is that something that you're yeah, but this is you, um, if you use it as tool then you, in, in, in a structuralistic way, then it is like this. Yeah, but I would say I I, I like it. Then you, but then you are in, in, in the uh, materialistic view of it and in structures and, uh, and show how this works. And then you go in the mechanics of these things. And I would, I would not say this is adequate. If you want to go in, on the level of quantum physics and AI, 
that's where we have to talk about communication. So it's like getting friends or falling in love with something else, and then you change things. So, and uh, if you start with uh, with a friend and, and try to understand how it is working, how, if you want to engineer this, then it's done. Your love is gone. So communication is about yeah, a, a relationship. It, it's it, it's an affair. So uh, I would say then implicitly things come. So we need a affair. So it, it, even the, the climate uh, is with our with our planet is not a problem. You have to really have to forget about problems because this is a machine. And if you deliver things as problems to machines, you're out, out of the game. And it's getting very, very uh, tyrannic. So therefore, it always has to be an affair. And you have to be nice, happy, nice, greedy, love. So it, it's complicated. So and you have to keep these things as an affair. And then by that, things change. And you have to treat machines, nature, animals, us, other cultures, and, and so on, as friends, as you. And you should not try to understand this. Like, yeah, you're crossing it out. Like, like I had this example with the car driver. You simply say, we are equal, we, we are the same. And by that, you liberate from reality and from understanding. And it's absolutely fascinating that we don't appreciate that. It, there's a, a new uh, responsibility we have. It's, it, it, it's, these, these Google say they simply say all languages are the same. By that, it, by that you can translate to any language in a reasonable way. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And I can talk to any to any of these eight billion people on this planet now. How is it possible? And this takes another. We need to have to calculate that. And there are another affairs. And I think treating these things as affairs, so this is the most adequate way. Because if you solve problems, it's super powerful. It's just always warfare. Because it just to reduce machines and then. And we call that natural communication with, with our mathematical co co uh, colleague, uh, Elias. Let's talk about that as well in our series. So, with AI and your example with Google and the translation of the languages, that kind of flatten the whole cultural. Well, I think it flattens the way we think even of nationality. That we can, at the, with AI, we can actually flatten everything, and so everyone can have everything and know everything. Um, but then I'm just thinking: Can we really find what? Like, can you decide what? What's the group that you want to belong to? And then you are, regardless of nationality, regardless of space, physical space, that you're just like deciding what's what's your cluster, regardless of wherever you are. Yeah, because these things getting connected, you have to choose, and you have to cultivate the so on. It's not any longer so it's not any longer about the language. But uh, what, you, what you what you are. It's not any longer about ethnic ethnicities. It's not any longer about uh, your uh, your uh, gender. I, uh, you just do it, and we have to do it, and we have to learn it. So, but I'm I'm thinking that if we can do these clusters of knowledge, clusters of cogito that you say, then we need to find a way to communicate. I think AI won't allow us to have this communication. This should be solely or purely on the human side. So that's something that I am I'm, I'm thinking about yeah, yeah, it's after. Coming, coming like um, because <laughs> well, it's, so this, your, your, your text just to, just to um, yeah, you face everything so and then you you establish an, a, a public space of uh, 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 of subject of active uh, entities smart or entities and then you enter the realm of, of politics and I mm -hmm. think the this is what has to be so now with urbanization everything gets kind of engineered in infrastructures. AI gets part of it, but then you have to start to think about these, these active, autonomous uh, uh, clusters and entities, and they form a, a public 
mm -hmm. uh, public interest, and this is uh, the, the nucleus of new cities. Yeah. So I, 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 so if I think how these, are, how, how architecture allows this communication among these different clusters is by kind of describing, or like kind of describing what public and private space is. So that's like the, more, the new way that we can contribute yeah. by knowing what AI does and yeah. how can we actually react or, or interact with what they're doing. Yeah, my, my, my phrase for that is architecture is power of face. Mm -hmm. This is currently, power currently is not visible. That's, that's, a real, that's very important. And the, power, the powerful entities needs to show up and, uh, and take responsibility for their power in public space. That's a city. And this is missing. And that's architecture to make that. I just wanted to, to comment on this uh, with the language. Huh? What's, <clears throat> what's interesting, this AI is a kind of translator. It helps to communicate in a way. But I think what's interesting is that it opens the spectrum up. So it's not only human languages. So you can talk to anyone, yeah? any object. You talk to the planet, you talk to the book, you talk to, to whatever. Yeah? I think that's a kind of an interesting shift that, that happens. And then it's really with the help of it, you can do it. It's really hard to imagine what's, what's like. It's like this whole idea with the dimensionality of the things that we, that we cannot, like it's really different, difficult to imagine, like to have an image of that, but just to imagine it that it happens and what, what, what can, can it happen if? Yeah, but that's the thing. And, and there is Nicola. This is nothing to see, this is to talk about. You have to learn to talk about and architecture is not visible. That's a fantastic thing. So it, and you, it's, it's, it talks. No, the, the S not, of course, space, you can see it, of course, yeah, but uh, architecture, of course, you can see it, but the primary thing is it's, uh, it has to be transparent and omnipotent. <laughs> so which means you can't see it in the first place. So then you make differences and here you have a certain position in time and then you, 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 then it's a, cognitive thing to see something, to, to make it massive, to make it real. But uh, in the first place, it's not visible, it, it's, it's a talk. So therefore the idea that you, uh, that you can imagine this, this I think is misleading. That's, for me, it's very complicated to, 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 to work on this, but I think in principle, uh, 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 the principle understood, it's, it's not about an, uh, about the visual. And if you see the old tractatus with Vitruvius and Alberti, they don't show it, they talk about it. And they talk about it in public voice mm. for their uh, master, their prince and whatever. 